Hi. Welcome to Prime Recap. When he learns that the Vikings of Burk are taming dragons, a bloodthirsty leader sets out for the island with his army to destroy the village and steal the creatures, setting off a gigantic battle involving men and beasts. Today we'll recap the story from the 2014 movie, How to Train Your Dragon 2. After Hiccup succeeded in proving that dragons and humans can live in harmony, the Vikings of Burk began to coexist with the creatures, taking them all to live in the island's stables, where they have free food and everything necessary to keep them well as well as creating various sports involving dragons for fun. But unlike the others, Hiccup and Toothless spend most of the day exploring the sea around Burk, discovering and mapping out the new lands while their friends play a kind of Quidditch with sheep instead of the Golden Snitch. As they fly toward the horizon, Hiccup locks the prosthetic on the tail of the Toothless and throws himself from his saddle, using a glider suit to fly alongside the Night Fury. As the young man loses attitude, the dragon throws small balls of energy that keep him hovering in the air, but because of the fog, they end up approaching a gigantic mountain without realizing it, forcing Toothless to grab Hiccup and wrap him on his wings at the last second, preventing him from suffering any damage during the fall. After the not so smooth landing, the young man criticizes the rescue maneuver and says that they need to train more, leaving the Toothless Dragon quite upset. After they reconcile, the two take the map they've been drawing and add the new discovery, naming the island G Armpit and getting ready to explore the place. But before they fly off, Astrid catches up with them and starts talking to Hiccup, discovering that the young man is avoiding going back to Burke because a stoic wants to appoint him as the new village leader. While they are talking about responsibility, they spot a large amount of smoke in the center of the island and decide to go there to investigate, finding huge ice spikes in the middle of a lake. Flying over the place, they find several ships pierced by the crystals, as well as a few vessels that are still in one piece. Suddenly, some men appear and fire a net in their direction, hitting Stormfly and knocking Astrid down, forcing Hiccup to dive into the air to save his girlfriend. Completely trapped, Deadly Natter falls into the hunter's ship and throws a few thorns, but the men manage to deflect and immobilize her, forcing Toothless and Hiccup to land on the ship to try and rescue their friend. Apprehensive, Stoic's son holds the men at bay with a flaming sword and asks them to release Stormfly, but Eret, the leader of the hunters, refuses, saying that he will take both Deadly Natter and Night Fury to be part of Drago's dragon army. Trying to keep the peace, Hiccup says he wants no trouble and again asks them to let Stormfly go, but Eret refuses and orders his men to capture the Night Fury. To defend his companions, Toothless spits an energy ball at the ice spines above them and ends up dropping a giant stalactite on the hunters, causing the men to move out of the way and allowing Hiccup to free Stormfly, enabling them to flee while Eret and his soldiers just watch. In Burke, Hiccup goes to his father and tries to tell him about what happened, but a stoic thinks he wants to talk about the village leadership and starts giving him some lessons on how to be a good leader, only stopping to pay attention after his son mentions Drago Bloodvis and his army of dragons. Knowing the size of the mess they have gotten themselves into, stoic orders all dragons to be caged and locks all the entrances to Burke, forbidding citizens to leave the island. Wanting to keep the peace, Hiccup suggests going to Drago's hiding place to talk, but a stoic says that peaceful times are over and that they must fortify their defenses for the war to come, claiming that he cannot talk to Bloodvist. Disobeying a stoic's orders, Hiccup and Astrid leave Burke and fly in the direction of the fortress where they saw Eret, finding him on a ship sailing to Drago's hiding place. To accomplish his goal, Hiccup gives himself up and enters one of the dragon cages on his own, accepting to be taken prisoner by the hunters and leaving both Eret and Astrid very confused. Thinking that he is up to something, the ship's captain asks what is going on, and Hiccup replies that he wants to go to the hideout to change Drago's thoughts about dragons, showing how it is possible for them to be friends with humans. At that moment, a dragon captures Hiccup and Toothless climbs the pole to save him, but soon realizes that it was the Snoutloud who captured him and just watches as he is carried away. Wanting to capture the dragons, the hunters start firing nets in the creature's direction, only stopping when a stoic lands on the ship and pushes Eret away like it's nothing. Impatient, the leader of Burke orders his son to get on his dragon and return home, but as Hiccup continues to insist on trying to dialogue with Drago, a stoic decides to tell him about the day when the village leaders met to discuss the dragons and Bloodvist appeared saying that he could control the creatures and keep everyone safe if they agreed to serve him. As they laughed at his proposal, the man left the hall shouting that he wanted to see how they would do without him and ordered his dragons to storm the meeting, setting the ceiling on fire and reducing everyone in the hall to ashes, with a stoic being the only one who made it out alive. Finally, he argues that men who take lives for no reason cannot be convinced and asks once again that his son climb into the Night Fury, but Hiccup insists on dialogue and takes off saying that if he could convince him, he can also convince Drago. 
Furious, the leader of Burke orders Astrid to take the others back to the village and leaves after his son together with Gobber. Above the clouds, Toothless senses the presence of another dragon and begins to growl, but Hiccup thinks it is his father and keeps his guard down, being surprised by a stranger in armor and his gigantic dragon. In fear, the young man just watches as Toothless stares at the targets, but this is exactly what the stranger wanted, to distract the Night Fury while another dragon arrives from behind and captures Hiccup, causing the Toothless Dragon to fall over the frozen sea. In desperation, Toothless tries to fly to his friend's rescue, but since the prosthesis in his tail is not locked, he can't get out of the water and just watches as the young man is carried away, not realizing that dozens of sea dragons are down below wanting to have a bite. Away from there Hiccup is taken to a cave filled with these ice crystals and is completely surrounded by dragons, being forced to use fire to distract the creatures. Taking advantage of the breach, the young man approaches one of the dragons and tries to tame it, but the masked stranger does not allow him to touch them and gives a command with his staff that causes one of the dragons to carry Toothless to Hiccup. With another command, he can get the surrounding creatures to start lighting up the area with fire from their mouths, showing he has complete control over all of them. Slowly, the stranger approaches and manages to get Toothless to lie down for a cuddle, leaving Night Fury totally mesmerized as he comes close to Hiccup. Closer, the stranger sees the birthmark on the young man's chin and immediately recognizes him, taking off his mask and revealing himself to be Valka, his mother. Impressed, Hiccup begins to follow the woman as he asks her several questions about what has happened to her over the past 20 years. But Valka ignores everything he says and takes him to the center of the cave, where lay the thousands of dragons she rescued during her time outside Burke. Wanting to know more about her son, the woman asks how he met the Night Fury and Hiccup tells his story, as well as talking about all the changes that have happened in Burke in relation to the dragons. Incredulous, the woman says that this is impossible and tells about the day she left, saying that she was trying to defend the village from an attack when she saw a dragon entering her house, where little Hiccup was alone. To defend her son, Valka took the axe and ran towards the beast, but when she got close enough, she found the dragon playing with her son in his cradle, making her believe that it was possible to live in peace with the flying monsters. Impressed, the woman stares at the creature, which appears to be quite gentle, but that is only until a stoic arrives trying to ram his axe down the dragon's throat. With the house on fire, the leader of Burke goes through the fire to rescue his son, but ends up leaving Valka alone with the creature, who took a liking to her and decides to take her away from the village, teaching the woman to live away from civilization and helping her in her mission to rescue the dragons that needed help. After telling the story, Valka shows that the nest is ruled by the Alpha, an extremely rare species that is able to command thousands of other dragons, except for the youngsters who never obey anyone. With its freezing breath, the creature built a nest inside the cave, serving as shelter for Valka and the other dragons. Since the winged creatures are hungry, Valka decides to teach her son how to feed the flock, taking them all to the middle of the ocean, where Alpha gobbles up a large quantity of fish and spits it out, making a veritable feast of freshly made sushi rain down. After the meal, mother and son spend the whole day together, and Hiccup decides to take advantage of the afternoon ride to show off his glider, locking on toothless prosthetic and jumping out of the saddle. While gliding through the air, the young man once again goes all out toward a rock and Night Fury is forced to grab him at the last second, using his body as a shield as they fall into the fluffy snow. After the landing, Valka stays close to her son and apologizes for not staying by his side in the last years, but commits herself to, from now on, work together with him to rescue the dragons, sharing all the knowledge she has acquired in the last 20 years. The woman then gives the Night Fury a massage that causes a kind of scale to appear on his dorsal side, which will make it easier to make turns and improve rescue maneuvers. Excited, Hiccup says that now they can both go and talk to Drago together, but Valka repeats what a stoic said, that it is not possible to dialogue with those who take lives for no reason. Not far away, a stoic finds Hiccup's mask in the frozen water and hands it to his dragon to sniff, following the young man's scent into the cave. Upon finding his son again, the leader of Burke begins to carry him out of the nest while Hiccup tries to tell him about his mother, but since he doesn't listen to the young man, he only finds out that Valka is still alive when he finds her in one of the frozen rooms. In shock, a stoic strides toward his ex-wife without saying a single word, stopping face to face and saying that she looks just as beautiful as the day she left. On the way to Burke, Astrid and the others stop at a glacier to await a stoic's return, but since he is taking longer than he should, the group assumes that they have gone to Drago's hiding place together and decide to go after them, capturing Eret to show them the way. When they arrive at the lair, Astrid asks Stormfly to keep an eye on the hunter while she and the others investigate the place, but Drago's men notice their presence and fill the dragons with tranquilizer darts, causing them all to faint. With this, 
Eret can lead the unconscious creatures to Bloodvist who defends himself from the flames of a hookfang as if it were nothing, taming the dragon through fear. At that moment, Drago sees the inhabitants of Burke and asks who they are, making Astrid realize that Hiccup has not yet passed that way. Trying to frighten the villain, the girl says that they are from Burke and that hundreds of dragon trackers are on their way there, claiming that if they touch them, the son of a stoic and his army of dragon trainers will crush them all, but this was a very bad idea, because she unwittingly reveals that in Burke there are thousands of creatures and that all the warriors are off the island, so they will go to the village and capture as many dragons as they want. To guard against the attack, Bloodvist says that they must break into Valka's cave and eliminate the Alpha as soon as possible, increasing its power and going on to the final war against the powerful dragon trainers in Burke. To do this, he arrests Hiccups and Eret's friends for bringing the enemies straight to their hiding place, but the leader of the hunters does not accept being betrayed and decides to help the inhabitants of Burke, knocking out his former colleagues and freeing all the prisoners, including the dragons. In the cave, Valka and Astoic are having their romantic reunion when Drago arrives with his army of men and monsters, starting the great war for the control of the beasts. To lure the Alpha out, Drago sets some traps with chained dragons, but Snoutloud and the others disarmed them all while they were still on the ship, managing to free the creatures and even eliminate some of the villain soldiers. Despite being outnumbered, the inhabitants of Burke manage to stay ahead and cause great damage to the humans in Drago's army, but since they don't want to hurt the dragons, Valka decides to go out with the Alpha to try to bring everyone under his control, undermining the villain's military power. As soon as he sees the woman, Bloodvist throws a net that knocks her off the dragon, coming face to face with Valka and saying that he has brought a challenger for his Alpha. At that moment, another equally colossal ice dragon emerges from the depths and lifts all the surrounding ships, heading for dry land to fight the current leader of the nest. Taking advantage of Drago's distraction, Valka tries to land a blow on the villain's back, but it doesn't have much effect and she is easily knocked down by Drago, remaining totally defenseless while the man prepares to finish her off. At the last moment, a stoic manages to save her and prevents Bloodvist from touching his wife, asking her to go help the Alpha while he is left to face Drago alone. Even though he is extremely strong, the leader of Burke has an even fight until he manages to land a good sequence of punches, but soon receives a spear blow that throws him far away. In the background, the two gigantic dragons begin to trade headbutts like two elephants, hitting each other with tons of force with each blow, but despite Valka's help, the Alpha eventually loses the fight and control of all the dragons, causing the creatures to now obey Drago's commands. Using his full control, Bloodvist orders his dragons to attack Valka and freezes the tail of the woman's dragon that begins to fall. To save her, a stoic leaves the battlefield and flies to them, catching his wife as she falls, and sticks his axe into the ice rock to reduce the speed of her fall. At that moment, Hiccup lands near Drago and starts trying to convince him to stop, using his old speech of kindness. But the Viking shows that his arm was torn off by dragons and says that the creatures were responsible for the worst days of his life, including the destruction of his village and the death of his family. Confused, Hiccup then asks why Drago wants to tame the dragons and Drago replies that he needs the creatures to dominate them even more, but the son of a stoic is no fool and soon realizes that he wants to use the dragons to control his followers, eliminating anyone who tries to stand in his way. Still, Hiccup tries to convert the villain and asks to take him to Burke to see how dragons can live in harmony with people, only Drago doesn't want to listen and decides to show that Toothless is a simple beast like any other. To do so, he orders the Alpha to dominate the Night Fury and make him attack his own guardian, hypnotizing the Toothless Dragon, who even tries to resist, but ends up giving in to Drago's influence. Realizing what is about to happen, a Stoic leaves Valka in safety and runs toward his son, leaping in front of him just as the Night Fury fires its final blast. As a result, the leader of Burke ends up being hit instead of Hiccup and is buried by some ice crystals, losing his life almost instantly. Already out of the influence of Bloodvist, Toothless sees the body of a Stoic on the ground and tries to approach to mourn him, but Hiccup is full of hate and begins to blame him for his father's death, expelling the dragon far away. After eliminating a Stoic, Drago feels his objective is accomplished and begins to retreat, directing his entire army toward Burke, including Toothless, who is captured and mounted by the villain. With the end of the battle, the inhabitants of Burke hold a last ceremony in honor of a Stoic and launch incendiary arrows at the ship where his body lies, opening passage for him to reach Valhalla. Completely devastated, Hiccup says his goodbye while he regrets that he was a disappointment, forcing Valka to come closer to cheer him. Saying how much a Stoic has always believed in his potential, and that from now on, it will be up to him alone to defeat Drago. Motivated by his mother, Hiccup decides that he will save Burke even if it costs him his life, and to do so, he decides to take all the youngsters left in the nest and lead them into battle, 
since the little dragons do not obey anyone, least of all the Alpha. In Burk, the people are spending the early hours of the morning with their dragons when Drago arrives on the scene, using the Alpha to hypnotize the creatures and bring them under his control, leaving the villagers helpless in the face of such power. Just then, the last warriors of Burk arrive on the horizon and start distracting the Alpha by throwing sheep up in the air and playing shrieks all over the city, taking away the giant dragon's attention while Hiccup approaches Toothless. Since he is still under control, the Night Fury can barely see him, but the young man is quite confident and Drago decides to allow Hiccup to try to bring him out of hypnosis, positioning the Alpha to focus all his power on Toothless and make things even more difficult for the Night Fury. Still, Hiccup does not give up and gets closer and closer to his former companion, apologizing for everything and saying that he was not to blame for a stoic's death. In an intense internal battle, Toothless finally recognizes Hiccup and breaks out of his mind control, making Drago so angry that he starts beating the dragon. To defend himself, the Night Fury snatches the spear and throws Bloodvist out of the saddle, but his prosthetic was not locked and he too begins to fall, forcing Hiccup to jump out of the dragon to save Toothless before he hits the water. With the help of the Night Fury, the future leader of Burke decides that he needs to separate Drago and Alpha and takes a blindfold to put over Toothless' eyes, preventing him from falling back into mind control. Duly protected, Night Fury moves toward the Ice Giant and deflects its freezing breath at the last second. As Drago laughs in their faces, Hiccup arrives with his glider and uses the poisonous breath of the Barf and Belch to create a path of smoke near the villain, releasing a spark that ignites the flammable gas and blows up the Alpha's face. With the Ice Dragon's tail coming toward Hiccup, Toothless sticks out his dorsal scales and uses them to make an extremely sharp turn, saving the human from crashing at the last second. After dodging, the son of a stoic lands near Drago and says that everything is over, but while he is distracted, the Alpha appears from behind and blows a freezing blast in his direction, forcing Toothless to protect him with his own body once again. From within the ice crystals, the Night Fury uses all his power to break the stalactites and get rid of the frozen spines, defying the Alpha Dragon just to protect Hiccup. Even though he is much smaller, Toothless begins to shoot the Ice Giant in the face with full power, freeing everyone from the enemy's control and becoming the new King of Dragons. With the help of the creatures, the Night Fury continues to bombard the Ice Giant's face until it breaks his tusk, causing him to retreat with his tail between his legs and take Drago to the bottom of the sea along with him. Thanks to Toothless, everyone is now free and the dragons revere the new Alpha, swearing eternal loyalty to the legendary Night Fury. After the battle is over, Hiccup kneels in front of the Elder and is appointed as the new leader of Burke, bringing the village back to peace and turning the place into the true paradise of the winged creatures. So what did you think of this movie? Leave it in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please like and subscribe for more movie recaps. See you next time.